Next game, game number eight then. Uh, we'll switch the scene and go in. Okie dokie, welcome back to War is Coming Grand Finals, game eight here, uh, between the Tyrant Legends and the Warlords. The Legends once again winning the ground, but uh, we're here with game eight because all nine games will be played. It's 5-2, and uh, well, game number eight is going to be played on Sealed Islands yet again. Another map that we have not seen so far in this event, as far as I can tell. So what is it? What is it with all these awesome maps that are suddenly appearing in the grand final stage and nothing else? It makes me sad. It's just a, it, it feels like wasted potential to see these maps. But oh well. Um, so Sealed Islands then. Interesting looking map, actually. And it seems like, it seems like Vipers in yellow. Ah, there he is. Okay, I was wondering where he was on the map. It looks like a piece of gold there, like on the mini map. I was like, what? There's no one up there. Have I, have I got my grey to black patch turned off? No, it's just the viper. Just the viper disguising himself as a piece of gold, as usual. Uh, probably playing as the mines as well, no doubt. Oh no, it's playing as the Huns. Well, that's also not surprising, but uh, either way. Um, this map then, a uh, pretty cool map actually. I'm gonna... I, I'm pretty sure you cannot wall on this on this stuff here. So that means that you it's always open, unless you want to wall like this and, and go all the way around like that, uh, which is pretty cool. And uh, also probably will block this off. Uh, I always forget how these things interact with the water. These like non-standard terrains. Um, it'll be interesting to see if any galleys could cross this or anything like that. Um, map itself, lots and lots of gold, lots of stone. There's no shortage of resources at all. Um, there's also Center Island, which is really pointless. It's got a tiny bit of gold and a tiny bit of relic on it. A tiny, tiny, teeny, tiny relic on the center island. Not really worth going for that at all. But it is certainly worth going for water here. As uh, this is probably um, one of the more watery maps. Water based maps in the uh, grand final stage. The fish is pretty impressive. There's lots of fish in the water here in the, in the deep blue sea. And uh, there's lots of... Um, Lots of reason to take water because of the shape of the islands. If you look, the uh, the, the shorelines are pretty close to the TCs, and uh, they're going to be able to do a lot of harassment from the water as well. Maybe even bombard cannons if they win the water, and they have the Vikings on the water there as well. So this game probably going to be really focused on the water. It will be interesting to see how the right side goes down with this being open, but I still think the focus is going to be on water here. So anyway, we'll look at the, the teams, the, the players and stuff for the... Uh, for the Tyrant Legends, we've got the Jordan 23 down to the southwest. He's playing in the red as the Vikings. The Vikings here, obviously, um, going to be good for that water. And also for the sling, should he feel the desire to do it. The burning desire that builds inside of him. Uh, you know, he's, he, his hand is shaking as he tries to stop himself pushing that send resources button, but he just can't help it. And uh, I don't know, maybe maybe we'll see him uh, slinging later on, who knows. But uh, Doc up first, that's going to be the focus. Up to the north of the map, in the yellow, we've got the Viper playing as the Huns. And uh, he is... Uh, <laughs> oh, that's funny. Let's improve in the chat said if you capture the relic because it's so small you have to pay the game two gold per second to hold it because it's that worthless. Um, <laughs> yeah, Viper up to the north in the yellow as the Huns there. Again, pretty good hybrid um, sieve. Great on water, great on land. Good to have the Huns in the game. And uh, for the Tyrant Warlords then, over to the far east in the, the green, we've got Riot playing as the Mongols. Very fast on the water, also very fast on the land, but clearly going for a dock over this side. Interesting dock location, as uh, Jordan 23 is docked in the middle, which could mean that uh, if in order to get to Riot's boats, or in order for Riot to get to, to Jordan, they're going to go all the way around the edge of the map. But uh, that's if they can't cross this with their boats, which they may be able to, but I don't think they can. Um, also, a Fire then, last but not least, out to the very south, I'm going to guess Fire's playing as the Vikings. We've not seen Fire play at all yet in the 2v2 series. But, via, uh, but Fire is definitely the token Viking player for the Warlords team, and indeed, he is playing as the Vikings, so uh, that probably explains it. Um, I'm, I'm really looking... And I'm really looking forward to uh, to seeing how this water war goes down. To be honest with you, the warlords have been stronger on the water for most of the the games that they've uh, that they've played water on. You know, in fact, I think two out of their wins so far for the warlords have been water maps. They typically seem to be 
um, a better water water team. And with Fire being on the Vikings, uh, Fire is a really strong water player. The Warlords might have a chance at getting a win here. And if that is the case, that's just going to be a really good track record for them on the water. But not a great track record overall, let's be honest. Um, so yeah, we'll have a look, see how it develops with this. Um, be interested to see if Riot does t t attempt some kind of land um, attack at some point. He's also nabbed a couple of sheep from Viper at the back as well. So... Uh, Obviously, Riot going to the back, taking a couple of sheep and hiding them away, which is good. Stopping Viper getting them. Not that Viper really needs them, because he's up to feudal. And in fact, pretty much everybody's up to feudal here. And Riot, of course, being the first up to feudal, because he uh, is the Mongols. Look at this, though. Going forwards with some villagers. And this is what I'm interested in seeing. This is what I'm talking about here. Mixing it up a bit and uh, changing things up slightly. So it seems like he's coming forwards with four builds. Obviously, his fishing ships here are going to be pretty safe because he's not docked in the middle. And he's going going straight towards Viper's base. Viper knows it's coming. He's seen it. And we see that barracks there from Riot as well. Jordan and Viper both bringing their scouts over here to try and spot out what's going on. But I don't think Riot's going to be able to get up his, um, his stable fast enough here um, before Viper can get up a barracks and defend. Whether or not Viper even bothers doing that. I mean, he could throw up a barracks now and um, get a spearman out. It will throw off his uh, his galley rush. And at the moment, I think he's more focused on doing the galleys than anything. He can support from the water if he wants as well. And uh, bear in mind, he is going to have to deal with fire very soon. Who just reached the feudal age now. Jordan 23, also feudal, but last to get up. He's up on 24 pop and fires up on 25 at the moment with uh, seemingly... A much better feudal age. Jordan 23. Um, three docks. Fire just two for now. And I'll be interested to see if fire goes all out on the water. It looks like he will. He's gone for a full grush build. So I'm not sure what that is about. And Riot going for an archery range rather than a stable. That actually is a better decision. Um, you know, going for a stable is great. But going for an archery range is even greater. <laughs> the reason for that is because uh, archers, of course, will be able to fire over any walls. They're also going to be able to um, kill any spearmen that come out prematurely or, or you know, in, in, in anticipation of scouts from Viper. So uh, that's pretty good. Viper, they're walling up, and he's just going to go straight into two archery ranges to defend this stone wall as well. I mean, that's some serious commitment to the wall there. And those two ranges... Going to be coming up very soon. Starting to make, uh, well, maybe some skirms, maybe straight into archers. He has got four villagers on gold, so he'll be able to make a couple of uh, archers straight away. But quickly walling it here. Uh, fire standing his scout here to try and prevent Viper from walling it up. Riot's got a tower, though, and he's going to try and do everything he can to stop Viper walling this up. Meanwhile, Jordan23 on the water coming in with some galleys trying to hit uh, fire there. Three docks um, for fire at the moment. Four for, uh, for uh, Jordan, though, so he's definitely going to go a little more aggressive on the water, perhaps. But look at this. Viper getting his wall done. And uh, he's lost a lot of farm space because of this. It's a really, really quick wall from him. Had to do something there. Fire even bringing over his galleys now. And uh, perhaps they're going to focus fire on this piece of wall. Oh, good snipe of that villager there. Great play by Riot. Fantastic. Um, fantastically well done. And in he goes. He's going to bring down this stone wall as best he can. With archers behind it, with the tower behind it. Uh, he could have a good shot at doing just that. Looks like Jordan's going to get ahead on the water though. As uh, fire just lacks the docks at the moment, but we'll see what happens there, I guess. Fire's going for a faster blacksmith, which could mean faster fletching, and he doesn't seem too far behind in boats, uh, as Jordan's got most of his uh, kind of, you know, his, most of his boats are out of position at the moment. Viper's still adding in galleys as well, so these guys really prioritizing water at the moment. Even though Viper's still making archers, they are really prioritizing the water. Viper's coming over with the boats, and it's a good job he prioritized water. Going to be able to stop that stone wall going down and get up uh, or enough time to build this uh, watchtower in defense. So Viper's going to be nice and safe for now. And now it's just down to Jordan a Viper to win the water. And these guys are already outnumber fire. So we'll see if that is going to happen or not, I guess, in a minute. But Jordan 23, any second now getting that blacksmith up. There it is. It's about 50%. And a good number of galleys for him. 13 galleys to 11 uh, for Jordan 23 versus Fire there. And with 
The Viper having about three galleys on the water as well. He could come in around the back and start hitting some uh, some fishing ships. So that's pretty huge. Fire did get fletching faster though. And at the moment, Jordan 23 uh, doing fletching now at the cost of uh, villager production. But he is really doing a solid grush build. This is basically a, a pure grush build. He's not deviated from it at all. And it seems to be getting him ahead for now. But Riot still keeping that pressure on. He does not want to let Viper go here. And he's going to look for another way around. I'm surprised, to be honest with you, he's not done a transport. Oh, he's done a transport. Literally, as I said it. I'm going to do a transport up here. Uh, he's going to... Well, to be honest with you, I don't think he's going to need it. He's going to get in this way by the looks of it. Viper trying to get that blacksmith done. Losing a couple of villagers in the process. The blacksmith will go up. And uh, he needs that. He needs fletching. Because Riot has got fletching and Viper does not. Viper's going to break down that palisade wall with his villagers. And Viper going to do what he can to stop this coming in. But oh man, Riot's going to stop him. That's it. He's in. Sorted. And Viper's now in a lot of trouble as these archers break into his base. And he's already built a watchtower in a pretty... Well, not a great place, really. I mean, that's not protecting any of his resources. And look at this. Riot's going to get a bunch of villager kills now. Viper, I don't know if he can afford to do fletching. He has just done it. That's, that's a fortunate, I guess. And he's just going to try and push him away. And uh, look at that. Jordan 23 is sending in some stone now to try and get a watchtower, but it's not enough. More villagers going down. And Viper's down to 28 villagers at the moment, which is three less than Riot. Four less than Riot. And he's losing more and more and more. Riot just has way too many units in here. And Viper could not keep Riot out. Even if Viper had kept Riot out, he still had the transport ship around the back. And that would have certainly got him in. Now on the water, Jordan 23 and, uh, and Fire are still going at it. They both got very similar numbers. 16 versus 17 galleys. And so I, I think, to be honest with you... This game is looking great for the Warlords right now. Uh, fantastic play by Riot. I'm loving this. And Viper's entire eco is idle. He's got zero, absolutely no uh, resource income aside from these fishing ships. His idols uh, just sitting by this tower doing nothing. They can't do anything. Viper going to try and wall this up. He's going to lose a few more villagers because of it. Problem is, he's got this big bottleneck. He can only make skirms at the moment. He could make some archers, I guess. And Viper's going to let his villagers back out. But man, this is costly. Viper's going to rush down that tower. Shame for Rhea that he doesn't have more archers in the mix here. But he is still going to get a, a, a few more villager kills before Viper's done. Viper having to bring every single villager he's got into the fight. And Rhea is going to try and focus these down as best he can here. He still also has his transport ship at the back. I don't know why. I don't know how. But Viper lost... Or he's, or he has lost his, uh, his. Where is it gone? He had a galley back here. How has this transport ship survived with four health? I don't know. But what, however, it's happened, it means that Riot can still come round the the walls here. And at the very least, he is going to keep Viper's eco idle whilst he's chasing him down with these villagers. This is painful to watch on the water. Fire and Jordan are still neck and neck. So overall, this is a huge loss. For the for Viper's team or for the for the war legends here, Warlord's doing great, and <laughs> Riot's still picking villagers off. Jordan now starting to slink, not because he wants to, but because he has to, to keep Viper on his feet. And Viper's down to 27 economy units, which is 10 less pretty much than anyone else at the moment. So fire here. Has got the advantage against Jordan 23 on this top side because Jordan 23 is coming around the back with about six galleys looking for Riot's fishing ships. If you can take them down, that's going to be huge. But Fire's also up to the Castle Age. And with the Castle Age upgrade for Fire here, he is going to get the water advantage. He is going to be able to win the water. And if not win it, he is certainly going to be able to push it into his favor. So Fire now obviously haven't, hasn't have to send any resources over to Riot. And that obviously means that Riot is, uh, it, sorry, that the Warlords are going to have a big advantage now that Fire is Castle. So that's pretty huge. Jordan 23, um, what is he? He's um, nearly, nearly there. He's got about 440 food to go. But he's going to be on the, on the retreat on the water. And so far going back as well with his galleys here. Okay, no, it's just, uh, he was, I think he was patrolling and realized he needed to go back around. 
Really well played by Warlords. I'm liking this. Jordan23 gonna lose his galley, the fishing ships. Of course, he's evacuated the area to keep his galleys alive. As a result, losing his ships. Viper's gonna lose his ships. And this is just painful. And it's Viper just, he's on his knees at the moment. Plus one defense for both of these guys here. And Riot's still got his forward as well. Meanwhile, he's walled it up as well to stop anything coming through. Now, all Riot needs is to get to the Castle Age and start making some knights. And he is going to be able to do so much damage to the Viper here. If he can get through that wall once again, of course. So, fire right now. Gonna defend his ships, his fishing ships, as best he can. Jordan seems like he's gonna lose the water pretty soon, though. And, you know, that's a worry to me. Because if these guys lose water, it's basically game for them. I mean, they, they can try their hardest to get back onto the water, but it is never easy. It is never easy to do that. If I'm gonna clean up those galleys right there, no sweat for him, no problem whatsoever. And at the back of the map, Jordan23 rebuilding his docks. Because he knows that these docks on the front are going to go down very soon. Jordan23 is up to Castle now. But Fire's looking really dominant on the water here. And Jordan23 losing his wood line. Not nice at all. That's costly. That is very costly. And he's going to do everything he can to get back on the water here. But of course, Fire's going to spot him out. He is going to find these villages, he's going to see these docks, and he is going to start taking these docks down as well. So I'm really worried for Jordan23 on the water here. I'm worried for Viper on the land. That's a pretty decent sized army. If only he could transport around again, that would be huge. So Riot's not going to be far from Castle now either. He's halfway up. Surprisingly, Viper made it up to the Castle Age first. I don't know how he's managed that. But there you have it, and uh, we're starting to see Cavalry Archers coming out now, as well as that crossbow upgrade. And uh, we're also seeing a Seed Workshop for defense as well. So the Warlord's looking great at the moment. Um, population, or sorry, score-wise, they have about 400 score lead, which is really sizable. Riot now just has to be careful as uh, doubt, uh, sorry, Viper rather, gonna have those uh, Manganel out or that, that Manganel out very soon, as well as Cavalry Archers, which are significantly stronger. But honestly, the Legends have got a really big uphill battle in front of them at the moment. Uh, Viper's nearly like half the population of everyone else in the game. Riot, as soon as he gets Castle, he's gonna be bringing out those, uh, or the, the crossbow upgrade. He's still working on bringing down this wall as well, because he wants in. He wants in. He needs to get through this wall somehow. And now, obviously, Fire's got water control. He can certainly focus Fire this down. Tower down for Viper there, and Rids up to Castle. We're going to see Crossbow any second. Of course, Knight's coming out here as well, and the Knight's going to be perfect for dealing with the... Um, the Manganel here, and he can see all. He sees this. He knows what's going on, and uh, he, can, he can see that Manganel from a mile away. So, Knight coming out to deal with that specifically. Crossbow's done. Bodkin Arrow is done, and he's getting ready to go. Of course, Viper doesn't know this Knight's on the way, so if he gets caught out, he could lose a couple of Manganels here. These Cavalry Archers don't have uh, Bodkin Arrow yet either, so... I mean, this knight, it's got to do its job. It has to do its job. I guess we'll see what happens in a minute. Meanwhile, on the water, John 23 trying to make his comeback. He is short by about nine galleys right now. He's got the even, well, even upgrades. But there's really no way that fire, or, or no, uh, no reason why fire should lose the water from this position. Fire's gone around the back as well to kill off a few more fishing ships. I'm surprised, really, that he's not managed to pick some off. Very surprised. Look at that. Fire picking off galley, uh, sorry, Manganels from the water as well. Viper here down to 14 health on that uh, Manganel, losing one already. And Rhea can go. He may as well send his knights in as well. He's got plus one defense. That's enough for now because Viper does not have Bodkin Arrow. And he's trying to get that second TC up. But I'm worried. I really think Viper's in a lot of trouble now. This could be end game for him any minute. And, you know, Jordan23 can't win this in a 2v1. He needs Viper on his, uh, on his feet. Fire now sending some sling over to Riot. Of course. Can't have a game without the sling. <laughs> but uh, honestly, Riot is ready to do the finishing blow very soon. I'm surprised he's not put a forward siege workshop up, to be honest with you. We just got to keep a close eye on that Manganel. And Riot has to focus that down. So let's see. Is he going to spot it out? 
His knights are going the right way. They're going straight over here. There's the mangonel. And of course, he's focusing that straight down. Viper's going to do everything he can to stop these knights. But those knights will get the mangonel. There's no question about it. And at the moment, Viper only just getting uh, Bodkin Arrow. He doesn't have... Uh, bloodlines on these cavalry archers, which means these guys are really not as strong as they could be at the moment. And uh, to mess with you, I'm not sure why Rhea isn't engaging with these knights here. They're only scums. That's a lot of damage output for Rhea. And, uh, well, Viper's really relying on the sling at the moment. Relying on the sling so he can defend himself. But what's Rhea going to do? He's going to be a slippery fish. That's what he's going to do. He's going to slip right by. He's going to head straight towards Jordan 23. But he was undefended on the land. Because he's on the water. Fighting fire. With fire. <laughs> but no. Jordan 23 at the moment. Actually winning the water over there. He's got four more galleys out right now. Fire's army split in half as well. But on the land. He's in trouble. Gonna lose a few villagers for sure. He's been slinging rear. Uh, sorry, not slinging rear. He's been slinging vipers and resources as well. So Viper really needs to get bloodlines here as fast as he can, really, if he wants to fight these and uh, not lose too many cavalry archers. Cavalry archers are pretty expensive, really, uh, when you compare them to the crossbow. So getting that bloodlines upgrade is really worthwhile in making them uh, really pay for themselves. But yeah, John 23 winning the water back, which is a really big development there. And I can only assume this because Fire is sending resources over to uh, to Riot here quite a lot. Riot though, keeping that knight production going. And Mongol Knight's pretty decent. He's going to get plus two now, yeah. And again, probably could consider doing Bloodlines pretty soon. But there's a forward cattle drop. And this is pretty huge. Fire, Riot's just, well, splitting his army up now. Keeping pressure applied in as many places as he possibly can. Where's that Forward Siege Workshop though? Still no Forward Siege Workshop, which does surprise me, because a mangonel is always handy to have. Always handy to have a mangonel or two. Now Fire's uh, struggling on the water it seems, but these guys are looking to end the game on the land, and that's it, they've done it anyway. Viper calling GG right there. And you know, when Viper is uh, 34 minutes in game, and he's got 33 eco units, He's too far behind to really feel like he can make it back into the game. Riot's getting kills everywhere. At the end of the game there, the uh, the military, sorry, the, yeah, military points were uh, 55 kills to 32 losses for Riot and 55 kills and 30 losses for Fire. The water at this point didn't matter too much because Riot was all over the land. And uh, that was really well played by him. Great game from Riot. And again, another really fun, exciting, interesting game that didn't have a sling. And that, that is what I like to see. Good stuff. Ex excellent. Excellent. So that's game number eight. And the Warlord's going to get themselves another victory. Meaning that it is now... Um, 5-3. Unfortunately for the Warlords, it's still not enough to exactly win the series, but uh, getting another point on the board is always, always nice, and it, you know, it just shows, shows the haters out there that they can do it. They believe in themselves.